precocious writer named Thad Beaumont, Timothy Hutton, writes high-level novels under his real name while he writes trashy and violent crime noirs under a pen name, George Stark. He decides after a fan tries to out him to reveal that he and George are the same person to the press. After doing so, there happens to be a string of murders similar to the ones in Stark's novels. It's up to Beaumont and Sheriff Alan Pangborn, Michael Rooker, to figure out what the hell is going on. So this was kind of a weird slash tough movie to watch, mainly because of how this movie is barely available for streaming on the internet with the exception of Vudu and iTunes. Not even available on Amazon Prime or free sites, so I had to watch a crappy bootleg version on YouTube with terrible audio quality. By all means, if you are desperate enough to watch the movie, link is in the description, but be forewarned, it's barely worth it. Even with my shitty quality version that I had to watch, it's still a pretty awesome movie. While I did say it was barely worth it, if you see the quality, even a, an amazing movie like Shawshank Redemption is barely worth it with the quality I had to watch, but moving on. It was one of two movies that came out in 1993 that had the character of Alan Pangborn, the other of which I'll be talking about next time. Here, he is played by Michael Rooker, and he does a good and believable job. He was a calm but no-nonsense kind of cop. He was a man desperate to find a sadistic homicidal maniac, but didn't want to risk an innocent man because of it. As well as him being adamant in believing the insane story Beaumont is trying to convey to him, and willing to take Beaumont in if he has to. He's more portrayed as a side character here, while the next film I'll be talking about, Needful Things, he's the protagonist. I'll talk more comparisons when we get to that point. Timothy Hutton stars as Thad Boma and eventually George Stark, his evil alter ego. It's hard to gauge a performance due to the poor quality of the film I had to watch, but he did an okay job as Boma and Stark. He really wasn't better as one or the other, so he was only okay at both. Beaumont was kind of interesting, but was a bit too bland in execution to make me care more about his character. Stark was also pretty interesting, but he was a bit too over the top in his portrayal to make me like him as a believable villain, so the performance doesn't really have a middle ground. Stark should have been evil, but more subtle, and Beaumont should have been good and down to earth, but a bit more, I guess, lively? I don't really know how to describe it, just maybe somehow make him less generic. I don't know, maybe it's the writing's fault and less so having to do with Hutton. The rest of the supporting cast all do a serviceable job, but nobody really stands out outside of Hutton's dual performance in Rooker. I think the story is a bit weird, but I liked it. As I was reading up on it, it was a very good and personal story for King, as this related to him with his Rick Richard Bachman pen name and how he was outed eventually, as well as the main character representing his want and need to get clean from alcoholic and sub substance abuse. It's very strange how this and Needful Things really go hand in hand with its personal ideas and themes from King, and both movies were released the same year, despite this being filmed two to three years prior to release as well as having the same character in both with Pangborn. I just find it to be very interesting as well. The effects were hit and miss, mainly practical versus digital. The practical, the practical effects and makeup are very good while the digital effects looked really half-assed, but that's mainly due to Orion's financial problems during production. Overall, I think this is definitely an underrated King movie. The story is interesting, the personal themes from King were really intriguing, and despite Hutton not delivering an amazing performance, he still did a good job in the dual role. I definitely recommend watching this one. However, I would risk the 10 bucks and just buy the DVD instead of watching it on YouTube. But again, as I said before, if you're desperate enough, by all means.